Science, Social Climate Change. Testing, testing, one, two. It's all about the hood, it's all about the hood. And the bracelets and toe rings. <laughs> so anyway, we're uh, chilling. What does your phone say? What does your phone say? Phone Koo said he has some things that he wrote down. You have my phone in your hands. Oh, Lord. And this is testing. We're testing, right? Okay, so... so it's it, going, it's going. Okay, so he can record while I look at so cool. Yeah, so that's kind of cool. Okay, so l- l- let me hold it then. Yes, sir. Okay, so just, I guess that was testing. It's I, his I, phone, now, just to be clear. Are we now recording be for fair. real, for real? Or? It is for real, for real. Just keep it going. Okay, yes. Okay, hold on. Why did he say This is where I live. Oh, I was about to say, what the Isn't fuck? Isn't that kind of cool? It's my location. It's my location. That's cool. That is cool. Okay, so you, you introduce. You start. Introduce Already did. Um, uh, check your phone. Yeah. Alright, I think I'm ready to end. Your fly is down. I gotta be honest. His pants are unbuckled. This <laughs> sailor. <laughs> I'm just too excited for this interview. Jesus I went to pee. Christ. I went to pee. I didn't have time to like do everything. Okay, I'm good now. I'm sorry. Okay, okay, okay. So wait, what is this? It uh, says Ethan. <laughs> okay. Oh, uh, yeah, at the top. Okay. So you did you introduce me? Yes. Okay. Hello, hello. I'm Funku Gaga. Well, <laughs> Funku Gaga is the persona that I want to go for. I think it's a good one. I am creating it. It's a process, but it's coming. You need to steal the name. Uh, what Gaga? It's not hers. This is underground, folks. This is the f- this is a, the f- inside scoop. You don't know this guy. You'll be li- if we'll, if you're lucky, we'll tell you where to find photos of him at the end. <laughs> or maybe one day you just see me on TV. I guess you can just wait. <laughs> Something like that. Let's do this. All right. So what's up? We're just chilling. Um, let's see. What were some of the things we talked about? So one of the things we did this before. That's the thing. This is redemption. That's what I'm trying to say. Actually, this this is the, the no. Hold on <laughs> one sec. We recorded. We did this before. That's the thing. All this. So when he he's upset because he was he was uh he was no. on acid. Oh, okay, <laughs> I'll just say it. He said it. Take the band-aid off. Yes. Rip it cr- quick. Be honest. He was yes. on acid and he didn't want to. But we're going to... It wasn't that bad. Listen, I just want to take a moment, first of all, to thank you for uh, allow, allowing me to do this again. Because the first time, I was not ready for that. I was too turned. So Let's I, hear it. I, I was too turned. So I... My good friend has partaken in some party drugs, but some might say they are introspective. Yes. I, I, I would think so. He would think so. It's called LSD, folks. Pure LSD. <laughs> <laughs> Tripped. I remember. The, I, and, and people always say, don't trip alone. You shouldn't yeah. trip alone. Like, and I was just like, you know what? I think I'm just going to do this by myself. For your first time? For my, for my, I know. Is da- it actually? Dangerous, right? You shouldn't. Why would you? Yeah, you shouldn't. But I'm crazy like that. You were so like, I want to see what this is about. I, w- I was just like, you know what? Give me a tab. I-, I was still with my mother. So I went upstairs in my bedroom. Trip- and literally, literally, as soon as it started peeking, I looked out the window and I was like, I'm going to jump. No. I literally. You want an apartment or a house? A house. Yeah, so I was uh, on, on the second floor. So I could, I mean... I probably could have, could, have, could not have died, died, but well, I could have been. Like, I could feel have, like I need to get out of here. Yeah, like that feeling. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that sudden, sudden feeling. But then after a while, you know, after I realized what was going on, that I was just speaking, I started relaxing a little bit more, and also weed helped a lot. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And then after that, it was just pff, heavens. Here, smoke. Heavens. Smoke, smoke. That was for you. It's it's a lot of. I appreciate it. I'm I'm guessing he's going to play little clips of that episode, but I'm hoping that the whole thing because this is going to be better. Um. So yeah, thank you for allowing us to do this again. I appreciate it. Let me ask you one question. Yeah. I've been thinking about this. Mm-hmm. What um do you think that anybody? I got a. It's an epiphany I had, and it's a question that I need to ask. Mm-hmm. 
Are you, first of all, okay. Is, let me get this right. I'm going to edit to you. Edit, right? Cool. So we're good. Take your time. Look at that. What? The space heater. Oh. <laughs> Looks like little energy blocks. It does look cool. Um, do you think anyone is fully gay or fully straight? Actually, thank you so much for asking the question because that's one of the major things that I think we're going to talk about today. Um, and that I think also, when I think about my future, especially, you know, school and career and all of that, I'm really thinking that I want to dedicate my life towards the uh, topic of sexuality because I think it's so vital and I think, you know, along with race, uh, racial issues that we have and, you know, economical issues that we have, that sexuality is probably... One of the more important ones? Probably one of the more important ones. Like, probably, like, top three. I totally. would even say top two, totally. honestly. But we are just starting that conversation. So to answer your question, um, it's a tough question. And it, it's not... <laughs> it is, it's it not, is. It's not... It's not a, I don't think everybody is gay. I don't think everybody is straight. I don't think everybody is bisexual. I really just think that it's a it's a uh, it's a dance. It's a fluid type thing. That's beautiful. It's a it's a it's like it's like I grew up never liking chocolate or chocolate anything, chocolate cake, chocolate men, chocolate anything. But now, why? I don't know. I just never really liked chocolate. People were obs- people are obsessed taste, with chocolate. Like I just didn't like the taste. Then why is that? What does that do to men? I'm comparing it to sexuality to say in a way that I believe that if we were to be our natural selves and who we really truly are as people, as human beings and as, as, as animals, that sexuality, sexuality would be as fluid as your, as your appetite, for example. Like I never used to like chocolate as a craving. anything. It, 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 it's whatever you are in that moment. I never used to like chocolate. But now, sometimes I would... I get chocolate milkshakes. I get chocolate. I like, I'm starting to get into chocolate a little bit now. How old you when you started liking chocolate? This is what's like two years ago and I'm 23 now. And I never used... Like, what was the I, first chocolate thing you ate that made you like it? Wow, that's a good question. <laughs> that's a good question. <laughs> um, <laughs> it was probably, probably penis. But... Um, oh, <laughs> that's why he mentioned it. He was like, hold on. <laughs> No, 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 I'm just joking. I don't know, I can't remember. I can't, that's a good question, but I can't remember. Okay, next yeah. question. Why yes. do we keep the term black and white? Wow, that's like, When calling a yellow person, uh, an Asian person yellow is racist or, you know, and but it's weird because it's like, it's strange because calling a brown person brown, that is that, that is offensive determining, depending on, um, depending on the situation, you know, the thing (laughs) but why did we I feel like personally I think that we just keep them as bookends like we like this we like this we like labels I think as a society because it helps us understand better it's like a language it's like a common language that it people makes things learn. easier. It makes things easier. If you say that black man, I immediately know what you're talking about. If you say that gay woman, I immediately know what you're talking about. So labels help us. But I think we, we are starting to understand, as you're mentioning, that labels, although it makes things easier, it also, I think, restricts us. It, it, it depends it, on how, when you, if you go too deep, I don't know. Yeah, because are you Keep really white? Because are you, are you really white? You're not white. You're not, you don't I'm look not like this white. wall. You don't look because like white do doesn't in, white is so broad. Like it's so. I'm am I actually black? Because I'm not like my shirt. This is black. Do I look like this color? No. But people you people call me black. People okay, call I'm you sorry. White I was on a tangent. Easier. Yeah. To make to to make it easier. Yeah. Well, I don't think that is wrong. But why do you think that we keep those two ends and not and the, like why is calling an Asian person yellow racist? Well, I mean, I mean, uh, that's a good question. It is racist, and, and in some ways, I would even say that calling a black person black or a white person white is racist. But I thought you just said the opposite. No, no, no. But we need, but as a society, in the, in the, we I guess in a way the we context. we need those labels, I guess, to make things easier. I guess, but I think we need to have that. That's what we need to have these conversations to understand that when we are using these labels, when I call you white, 
or when you call me black or when I call that person, you know, yellow, which I would never call an Asian person yellow. I need to know what it means. I need to understand what it means. Yeah. Just like when I call you straight, that which is which is what you, you claim to be. I, when I call you straight, I yes, I, I, I believe you when you tell me that. And I understand what you mean when you tell me that. But I also know that in some ways that you're much more than that. Just like straight, you're not just I white. Mean, see, it's like I don't like labels like that. It's mm-hmm. like back to the very first question. It's like mm-hmm. I don't think that I think that there's no such thing as since if people agree that there is a spectrum of sexuality, that is true. If that is even a thing that people agree upon. If you agree with that, then that means that you're on that spectrum. Somewhere. Somewhere. Mm -hmm. And what that means is that you are rarely, the person, look, you're rarely 90% one thing. Mm -hmm. As human beings growing up today, and I feel like 90% is being like even generous when being like that person's like fully straight. But then, but then, but then, but then we say that I've also met gay men who but like, that's just the spectrum. Who are like allergic to pussy. So I don't. I know. would say I'm bi. I'm bi. Yeah. Okay. Like, you know. You know. You know. That's your first time openly saying that to me. Yeah. Yeah. I do. It's not a big deal to me. But I always knew. Just like I, I know about everyone. <laughs> The thing is, so is no me. one is. I mean, it's like I don't even like saying bye because it's not. It, it restricts. It still, in a I'm way, puts you in a spectrum. box. Yeah, yeah. It's not. It doesn't say the whole story. Yeah. Yeah. I understand. Like just, just like you look at me as gay, or, or maybe other people look at me as, as gay. Or for the longest time, I used to tell people that I was gay. But now, even using that label, honestly, Ethan, like I love men. Like I like men. I like. Like, period. Like, I would never... I'm very proud about that. I'm not insecure about that. But the label gay, though, I don't know, it makes me uncomfortable. Why? Yeah, because it, I, it, I don't think it fits. I don't think it tells you the, the full story because there's a lot more. Yeah, I feel yeah. like you should just say your preference. That I'm just open. I like to say that I'm open now. Yeah. I'm open. If I like you, if I vibe with you, if I connect with you... Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I I don't know like it's complicated. I th- I feel that, and I hate that people like. Let me ask that's you when this. labels suck. That's when labels are too much, and that's when labels take away from the person, and that's when labels are controlling the person rather than being a way as identifying the person. Ooh. That's Ooh. when it changes. Because labels are supposed to identify who you are, or help identify, Not or confined, make sense. Yeah, yeah but it, but it, but it does the opposite. I mean, with that because wow, like people good, because people put point. that on you because yeah. some people describe you with these things, yeah. Yeah. and it just it's very harsh because it's them judging you. Really, you know, no one wants to be judged, so it always comes down to that. So, you know, no one wants to be known as something. No one wants to be misunderstood. Like that's simple as that. Misun- that's the worst thing to be is misunderstood and and, and and you know it's crazy that you say that because I've always believed that one of the most important things in life when it comes to being a human is we all <coughs> want to know we all want to know if somebody understands us if somebody sees us for who we really are so yeah that's a good point if, if, if you're not being understood or if you're being misunderstood, that's not a life, man. So one of the things, so one of the things that I, I really want to talk to you about uh, along with sexuality is mental health and how that relates. Because one of the questions that I wanted to ask, ask you is, you also believe that sexuality in, in some ways is like very dynamic and that it's fluid. And you believe that most people are not 100% anything. Yeah. So if that's true, if that's true, Many people would claim that they're a hundred percent straight or gay or bi. How much do you think that plays on, on our mental health as a society? How much do you think it affects our mental health? You, I thought you were talking about trans. What do you mean? Wait, did you not mention trans? I thought you did. No. Oh. Maybe maybe it's my accent. But like for me, when I look back on my life and my sexuality and the way I relate to my sexuality and how I grew up. 
man, and I look at the way my mental health is. Whoa, wait, wait, what do you mean? What is the connection? There's a huge connection for Just me. Just say out, out, out like explain it because I'm, I'm high. Like, <laughs> like for me, I think for me, pretty much what I'm trying to say is that, especially after going to therapy uh, this past couple of months, I've, mm. yeah, I've started, to, I've started to realize that my whole entire life pretty much has been a, tra- a like a traumatic experience. Um, PTSD. PTSD, like, to the max. Everyone nowadays like, has PTSD. I mean, of course, of course, just this life alone. I'm sorry, that doesn't knock... I'm sorry, I, did not, that, I shouldn't even have said that because you were explaining yours. No, 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 it's fine. It's fine. And you, but you're but right, I was, like, I was just like, yes, me yeah, too. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, everybody. Yeah, because you two can relate. And, uh, uh, and I'm sure a lot of people can relate because just well, yeah. being born is like, <laughs> you know, being in this life is PTSD, That's period. Right. Yeah. But I think that Growing up, though, being aware of who you are, and especially your sexuality and the dynamics of it, though, and accepting it and living that truth is a traumatic experience. Like, my whole entire life has been a traumatic experience. And it's now that I'm starting to, like, take a sit, relax a little bit, and process everything. Because not only growing up in Cameroon, Africa, as a black little gay boy you know like wearing clogs <laughs> i guess yes <laughs> yeah. how was that shit what when we're in cameroon as a gay boy were you flamboyant well i left cameroon when i was 12 so at that age i did not even know what being gay was even though i already knew something was off with me I did not know what it was when did until, you know when something was off uh, I knew I, I knew that I was that I was quote unquote gay when I came to to, to, to the US <laughs> and I watched porn for the first time well actually actually I went to school and people kept calling me gay they were like you, you, you're a faggot you act like a girl you walk like a girl and I was just like what the fuck are you, what are you guys talking about gay gay so I went home and I tapped the word into Google gay and I started researching, and then gay porn came up. <laughs> and I saw the first video, I was like, Yeah. yeah. I was like, I like this. <laughs> I like this. Yeah. So that was how much I was hooked. 12. Damn. I was hooked. 12 years old, my mom passed. Mm. That was traumatic as shit. Mm. I can imagine. But. You know, you're talking about PTSD. Mm-hmm. That's mine. Mm-hmm. That has to be a huge part of it. Sexuality is a big one, but really it's not. Like, it's really not. Like, I don't even like labels. I just like love. And it's like, I just, you know. But anyway, she died of like, breast cancer. That sucked. But When you were 12? Yeah. Middle school. It started raining like shit out, so I know you're like thunderstorm. I just grabbed my guitar and played badly. That same night. Yeah. Was she in the hospital? No, yeah, hospice. Hospice at home, so at home. It was crazy. Yeah. But um, after that, much more spiritual, I guess. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Anyway, mm-hmm. PTSD. Mm-hmm. I went to a psychiatrist. Uh, I didn't want to be medicated. Mm-hmm. She wanted to put me on like antidepressants. I don't like that shit. Mm-hmm. Why didn't you like that shit? Why didn't you want to be... Medicated. Because I don't want them to control my brain at all. Mm-hmm. Something they have to take every day is not right unless mm-hmm. I want it to be. Mm-hmm. So I'll take that's the fuck shit. Like I'll take some things recreationally, but not <laughs> anything like SSRIs or like antidepressants. Because you don't trust it. No, not for me. It works for some people, I'm sure. Might work for me later, but not now. Mm-hmm. I don't mm-hmm. want to do that. Mm-hmm. So, so now that you're, how old are you now? 25. Okay, and this happened when you were 12. Where is your mindset on uh, that situation? And how do you think about your mother now? Sometimes I feel her when things get really drastic. Um, but, you know, it's, it, gets, it got rarer through the years might be in my mind and that's what scares me sometimes you know I'm always like fucked up when it happens but I still like 
you know, so you can't mistake it. And then sometimes in dreams, and it'll happen a couple of times in a dream, and you feel it. And you, whenever it happens, because it's so ran, like special, you know it's like special. So mm. you feel it. It feels mm. like electric. Mm. Do you believe in God? Yeah. Do you pray? Sometimes. My father passed away in 2017. He did? Yeah. I'm so sorry. No, no, please. Um, and he was on hospice too at home. He passed away at home, which looking back, I'm very grateful for. But when I got home that night and saw him, you know, already gone, I had my, the fir- my first panic attack ever, ever, like... Like it was, and I feel like even thinking about that night still, and I I even talk about this in therapy. I feel so ashamed and so stupid because it's like like I got so into my head, like the panic attack got so bad that my body, my whole body became paralyzed. Like I could not move a single thing. Oh, you were still sitting like like I was I was just laying down. My whole family, literally, my whole family had to like stop mourning for a second and like just massage my whole body and we had to call 911 like it was bad jeez so like when you talk about your mother I understand because I went through a lot so with no 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 please do not say that I, I do because I've been do, through it and I no, no. do what I feel sorry I know no, I, 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 I feel you but the reason I asked I, I the reason why I asked if you prayed or if you believe in God is because one of the ways that I've been coping and one of the ways that I've been healing is I actually really do believe this. It's not even something that I'm trying to sell myself. I actually really do believe this. I don't believe in God, but I feel like I have an angel now with me all the time. And I, when I pray or when I think or when I, you know, like I feel him like watching over me like all the time. It's almost like I'm living for him now in a way. Mm-hmm. So it's a nice Were you feeling. close with him? Not at all. Really? Not at all. And did you, did you did you did you get to get along? Oh no, we got along. We got along, but we were not close. How many brothers and sisters do you have? I have two brothers and three sisters. How did they take it? I mean, you know, that, I mean, yeah. Are you close with them? I'm. Well, I'm close to some of them. I'm not close. We don't. We we get along perfectly, and we love each other very much. But I don't think you know, like the conversations that we're having now. I don't really have that with my family. So, no, we're not that close. Okay, new question. Yeah. Can you be racist towards a white person? <laughs> drink a white claw. Drink, yeah. I should drink a white claw because this conversation is giving me a little bit... Um, it's, it's nice. Do you want to stop it? No, 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 no. I'm, 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 I'm good. I'm good. Is drink, this mine? Yeah, drink some. Okay. You finish it. That was good. Do you taste the difference? Like the taste difference in white claws? I don't people and between with what? Like 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 flavors. flavors? They're the same flavor. Oh. I was about to say like <laughs> they're the same. <laughs> Ruby grapefruit actually is my least favorite. Lime is I, I hated lime, but now it's great. Raspberry is always gonna be great, but it's kinda it's weird if they hit at the right moment, but then it's amazing. Black cherry's like eh. Started to like lime, it's thinner. Anyway, you need to take a break. You okay? Yeah, I'm fine. I just need to breathe for a second. Want to smoke some weed? Mm. Yeah, let's pause this bitch. <laughs> Put me on radio. This has been Social Climate Change, and this is Ethan. Check out Public Poem Project, because that's where we do most things. We uh, check out Running Poetry with Strangers. It's new shit. Um... I'm EKM94 on all the socials. Shouts out Funku on this one. Funku Gaga. <laughs> um, I'll post this picture whenever we got it. Whenever he has a social on. It's hard to get a hold of this guy. Subscribe, please. Love you guys.